David, thank you very much. And it's great to see, A, that the rain stopped, and B, such a great crowd. I want to start by thanking the UMass Lowell Band for a great job. Thanks very much for being here. And I also want to thank all of you for supporting our veterans. I especially want to welcome those veterans who are joining us today from off campus. Would you please stand and be recognized? And we want to thank you for your service. And we honor and thank the many students who are also veterans. If you're a student veteran, could you please stand and be recognized? Thank you for your service. We're also here this morning to raise a flag to remember, remember our Massachusetts citizens who have died in action on our behalf. We are especially proud of our student veterans who have organized this event and contributed to campus life in so many ways, from helping the new student veteran orientation sessions in the summertime to care package drives that we send to our troops who are deployed overseas. At UMass Lowell, we're proud of our veterans. We have more than 500 student veterans on campus and more than 700 registered online. Since the fall of 2006, we've increased the number of veterans receiving benefits by an average of 50% each year. The largest increase was in 2009 when the GI Bill took effect. This is good, but not good enough. When 35,000 veterans who returned to Massachusetts after serving in wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, we hope to see a lot more of them making use of these benefits. As Chancellor, I've directed our Standing Committee on Veterans Affairs to take the lead in making UMass Lowell a veteran-friendly campus. We've joined the Yellow Ribbon Program to help fund tuition expenses and the SOC Program, Service Members Opportunity Colleges, to help in the transfer of credits from military education to our institution. We have a dedicated veterans page on our website. Each year we thank our student veterans with a luncheon on or near Veterans Day. We've created a back to school workshop for new and returning veterans to help bridge the gap from service to school. And we have committed space to create a combined veterans benefit and drop-in center with increased staffing so that our student veterans can finally find, get the resources they need and the support of other veterans on the campus. This space should be available by March, certainly will be available uh, by the fall of 2011 at the latest. Over the next few months, we're gonna work together and make sure we make sure this space is exactly the way we want it to be. But we have a lot more to do. You know, I often comment on our, our new buildings uh, that we're building, and we're building a building here, a $70 million emerging technologies building, and obviously we're building a new building on the South Campus. But when a young man or young woman comes back from serving in Iraq and Afghanistan, and increasingly more coming back, and missing arms and missing legs. It is inexcusable and indefensible with older building, buildings if a student gets assigned to COVID-101, let's say, that we don't have the handicap accessibility. So we have a lot more to do to make sure that we are the type of university that, uh, that, that, that where veterans can come and, and, and be able to get to the classes that they need to get to. So we honor all of our veterans, and one of my great honors in serving in the Congress was to serve 14 and a half years in the House Armed Services Committee and to travel around the world to meet with our brave men and women who serve this country so well. We are especially pleased to have our newest senator from Massachusetts with us today, Senator Scott Brown. As David mentioned, starting with his years of service in the National Guard, he has made a point of helping those in active service, veterans and also their families. When he was a state legislator, he wrote a law that was passed with bipartisan support to modify the state income tax form so that veterans could identify themselves and learn about the welcome home bonus benefits available to them. In the United States Senate, he serves on the Senate, House, Senate Armed Services Committee, the Homeland Security Committee, the Government Affairs Committee, and the Veterans Affairs Committee. He has worked across the aisle to create a dedicated military liaison office within the new Consumer Financial Protection Bureau to protect military families against fraudulent life insurance policies. As you can see, he's working hard for veterans in Capitol Hill, and we thank him for that. 
And Senator Brown, before you come up, I want you to know uh, we're very proud here at UMass Lowell of our ROTC program, and we proudly have ROTC on our campus. Please welcome United States Senator Scott Brown.